I don't care what you're facing. God can navigate you through the worst of times. God already knows what you're dealing with, but he's on the ship with you. God bless you. This is Pastor Emmanuel Simmons, the pastor of All Nations Ministry, Jackson, Milan, Bolivar. Listen, we've now opened up our call center prayer ministry. You can call in for healing, for salvation, for deliverance of your family. We're trying to reach out to help anybody that needs help. It costs nothing to call in. We want no information except uh, your prayer request. You make your prayer request known. We have people here at the call center that will pray with you. Believe God for your salvation. Believe God for your healing. Believe God for deliverance. God wants to heal. He wants to deliver and he wants to save. So feel free to call anytime, Monday nights, Thursday nights, and Sunday morning. God bless you. And we welcome you to call. The number is listed below on the screen. Call at any time. God bless you. I'm going to say some things today that God in your shed. Well, you just know me. I'm going to say what God tell me to say. Hallelujah. I want you to know it's time. It's never been a time for us to. I respect our government. And we need, we need government. It's of God. But I'm not asking the government for nothing. The body of Christ, ought to, the government ought to ask the church. Hallelujah. So the Lord said to me, he said, the government should ask the church for help. You know, we have a deficit that's great. I think it's $30 trillion. But did you know God has that and more? If the government will just decide and make a proclamation that we want to bless the body of Christ, we take all restriction from them, anything that will, would, would hinder them from carrying out the mission of Jesus Christ, God would turn around and bless our government beyond measure. See, we're trying to get things settled in the natural. It's not there. The answer is not there. The answer is in the spirit. See, the answer is in the spirit. Hallelujah. I love all of you. I want to talk to you about some things God's been giving me. And the Lord spoke to me this morning. And he said, tell the people I've been giving you nuggets from heaven. Take them and run with it. Hallelujah. There are things that is coming out of my spirit that I hadn't studied and read, whatever, whatever. But it's, when I say things, I mean it's like little revelations of wisdom that will cause you to run. Hallelujah. And I want to talk to you today about something. I started on this two Thursday night, and I taught. Uh, we, we had uh, Vacation Bible School took about the whole service in Bolivar, but it was absolutely awesome. And I got to share about 20 minutes. Hallelujah. So, amen. I thought maybe I could end it there, but I'm not through chewing around this or digging around this tree. I want you to go with me to Romans, I think, chapter 8. Hallelujah. And then Matthew, back to Matthew 11. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8, I believe. Verse 32. Hallelujah. When you get there, it says, thank God for the word. Amen. I'm going to read that out of Romans 32. I mean, 8 and 32. We welcome all of those that are listening by live stream, and we pray that you would reach out today and receive from God. I wanted to encourage you, those that are watching by live stream, let you know that you're not at the end of your life. You really have the opportunity to have a new start, a fresh beginning. Whatever has been bothering you today, Jesus Christ came to set you free from it. And to give you life and life more abundant. If you're out there watching, you're not saved. This is a good day to say, God, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin. And I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. If you do that, if you pray that prayer and mean it, amen, your life will just begin. And you can have a wonderful life. Say a wonderful life. Y'all remember the movie they play every year, Christmas time, with Jimmy Stewart called It's a Wonderful Life? I love that. I love that, man. It, it blesses me. You know, we, we've been looking at so much bad, shoot them up, killing, rape, sexual, curse stuff that we don't, we don't know how to appreciate clean stuff. We don't realize it's searing our conscience.
to where when profanity is spoken, it doesn't bother you at all. But when you first got born again and profanity was spoken, particularly the kind you used to speak yourself, it bothered you. That means the church need what? Help. Say, help me, God. Hallelujah. Hold by Sunday. Look at here. It says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Say, he delivered him up? For who? For us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us what? What's those two last words say? All what? Freely. Without restraint. Without your hand tied behind your back. There's no gimmick in God's grace. He freely give us what? All things. I want you to write that word down, uh, words, all things in your spirit. All things. Hallelujah. Now go to John, I mean Matthew 11, verse 11 and 12, where we started the other night. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I need to ask something. It's going to sound a little weird. Does anybody have a, any leave or any ibuprofen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you in Matthew 11? Let's look at verse 11 and 12 again. It says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, I said this the other night, but it's worth repeating. There has not been born a man greater than John. Now, how many know the Bible said Moses was the meekest man Upon the face of the earth. You had Moses, you had Elijah, you had Joshua, you had Ezekiel, you got Jeremiah. You got all these other great men of God came. But the Bible says, and Jesus is here speaking, among men that are born of a woman, there is not a greater than John. Well, why is that? Well, all the others was born up until the Old Testament. John is the forerunner that introduced the New Testament to the whole world. So John has been given the privilege and the high honor to be called by God, not by me, by God, the greatest man ever been born of a woman up to that point. I understand that all the rest of the patriarchs and prophets were up to the Old Testament, but at this point, we're, we're having the unveiling of the new. So how many know the new is always better than the what? Than the old. You understand that? Now, I'm not telling you we, get a, we, we throw away the old because the old is the schoolmaster. Shout hallelujah. But Jesus said there's none greater than John the Baptist. But he said, but the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Now, what is he, what is he referring to? What is he saying? He's, he's actually saying those that are already in the kingdom of God dwell with them now. Those that are in heaven, the least one there is greater than John. I, I understand it perfectly because we yet got to get there. But that one that's in the kingdom, amen, that he was talking about is greater than John. Are you with me now? Hallelujah. Now, this centers around John. This text centers around John. That's why I said from the time, the next verse said from the time of who? John the Baptist. The kingdom of God suffered what? Violence. Say it, violence. But, say that word, but. But the violent take it by what? Force. Say, take it by force. Hallelujah. Now I want to talk to you about that. I started on that the other night and this morning. And it's important that you understand that, uh, uh, hallelujah, I've gone over about John being the uh, uh, greatest in the kingdom of God. He was the greatest man born of a woman to this point. But John was born, the Bible said, to be the forerunner of who? Jesus Christ. So John came to be the announcer, kind of like when a woman is getting married and having one of these ecclesiastic weddings, the little, the little uh, girl come running down the aisle, ringing the bell and said, the bride is coming, the bride is coming, the bride is coming. That, that child is the annunciator. He is or she is announcing that the bride is about to come. What a privilege to have somebody, and that's the greatest privilege. I thank God for the bridesmaid and all like that. But that annunciation really, to me, has the greatest place in the ceremony. 
Because that child is announcing what's getting ready to manifest. Shout hallelujah. God, oh, by Sunday, ha, ha, ha. Yes, God, I hear you. Amen. Amen. So John came with the privilege to announce the coming of the Messiah. Wow, wasn't that powerful? That God would consider humanity, hallelujah, and put an announcement in John. And by the way, as when the, when the little bride's girl will come ringing the bell, the bell ringer at the wedding, whenever she announced that the bride is coming, the bride is coming, just as soon as she finishes that, her position begins to diminish. She no longer is needed. Why? Because the, the, both, see, the climax and of all the ceremony is about to take place. What is that? The marriage between the woman and the man. Shout hallelujah. So this John that's considered the greatest man ever born of a woman has the privilege to announce the coming of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And then this same John ends up in jail. Hallelujah. Because John preached a message that most preachers won't preach today. He preached repent for the kingdom of heaven was what? 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 At hand. Whole lot of folk got large platforms. Great audience that won't preach some things that need to be preached. Why? Because they want the money to come in and all the come in. Let me, you know, let me tell you what I found out. If I obey God, whatever, and if you obey God, Whatever is needed, God will what? Supply. Shout hallelujah. That's why I'm not worried about speaking the truth. I'm going to speak it in love. I'm going to speak it in humility. But I do intend to speak the truth. Glory to God. I'm not afraid. I'm not trying to uh, gain membership by, by, by uh, 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 placating the gospel and not telling it as it is. Tell it like it is. Speak the word what? Only. Not my opinion. The word. And what I want to share with you this morning is nothing but the what? The Word. You can follow me in the scripture. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. He told me to be what? An imitator of who? Christ. So we all have a responsibility to follow Christ. Amen. And be in what? An imitator. In other words, amen, act out what Jesus did. Or they used to say, do what, what Jesus did. Amen. So we have John, praise God, being uh, uh, in prison. Because he told Herod it was wrong for him to have Philip, his brother's wife. He didn't like it. And because of that, they put John where? In jail. But I want you to know something about John. John had enough anointing on his life that people came out of the city to the wilderness to what? Hear the word of God. Now, everybody didn't want the word. I'm going to tell you something. When God began to display his glory and show us his wonders, everybody's not going to celebrate it. Why? Because everybody don't have a mind for the kingdom of God. Amen. I want you to become kingdom of God-minded people. We do things according to the kingdom, not to culture, the kingdom. Glory to God. Not, not, not according to society or, or, or some kind of group of people you hang with. Do it according to the what? Word of God. John, this same John said, man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceed out of the mouth of who? God. So we must live by the words that come out of God's mouth. Not the White House, not the senators, not the congressmen, not, 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 not your society, your group that you're part of. Out of the what? Word of God. Shout hallelujah. Because we have laws that are anti-God. Shout Hallelujah. Now, I don't mean throw the whole law away because the laws were set up by God. But man has perverted and changed the laws of what? God. Hallelujah. And that's why this world is in chaos. America seems like it's going backwards, but it's going to go backwards because when you forget God, you go down. Every nation, every people that forget God shall go down under hell. Shout hallelujah. It's time for the church. My God, let me take my time. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to get a hold of the kingdom of God and God's way of doing things. The kingdom of God is God's domain. It's God's way of doing things. Not my will, but whose will? God's will. Do you get that? Say, not my will. God's will. Say, now if the body of Christ take a hold of that, we can turn this world upside down overnight. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom of God is not only in word, but it's in power and in demonstration of the who? 
Holy Ghost. See, it's not only words. See, we've had a whole lot of words, but we need the full kingdom of God in manifestation. And John got put in jail because he told Herod, it's wrong for you to have your brother's what? Wife. And let me say this to you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. How do I say that, Lord? Hallelujah. Keep your eyes in your own house. That's an amplified way out of Proverbs. Amen. Don't be looking out of your window at somebody else's wife. Look at your own wife. Praise the Lord. You, if you keep your eyes on your wife, she'll look good to you all the time. Shout hallelujah. Yeah, I said it. I said that. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you know, ain't nothing wrong with looking. Looking got a lot of folk in what? Trouble. You can't prove that to me. Let's call David up. He's on the roof of, the, of, of his house. He looked out the window and saw Bathsheba. She was taking a bath. How many know you don't take a bath in your clothes? Hallelujah. And what he saw drew his mind to her. Her. His eyes got him in what? Trouble. Shout hallelujah. Say keep your eyes, if you're married, in your own house. And if you're not married, keep your eyes out of the houses of those that are married. Glory to God. Honey, I just, ooh, honey, she don't know what to do with her husband. If I had him, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would. Get your own husband. Get your own wife. And that ain't even, I promise you, I didn't have that in my spirit. But I'm not the preacher, the Holy Ghost is. Shout hallelujah. Oh, by Sean, that he will see. I both see, I say this, Lord. Yeah, Lord, I say, you married folk, I mean, you single people, I've been praying for God to give you husbands. And the Lord has assured me men are getting ready to come in and they're going to find you. He just told me to tell you to get what? Prepared. Get ready. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And you don't get ready to listen to everybody's advice. Go back to the book. Find out what it takes to get what? Ready. Praise God. I said get what? Ready. Wasn't there a woman in the Bible that had to go before the king and she spent two months getting ready? My God, she bathed in the best bath water. My God, they took all the best, ba best bath and beyond. Put it all over her. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. When she finally went before the king, my God, amen, King of Harris, my, who is this? Now, he had a wife, but she wouldn't obey. So she got rejected. That's how marriages get in trouble. We don't follow our place. And this is not my message. So get in your place so your marriage can work. Praise the Lord. Man, you don't, you don't harass your wife, tell her how ugly she is, and da 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 da, da and she's taking care of you. Are you crazy? No, have some thanksgiving. And say, baby, I thank you for what you're doing for me. She cooking your food. You ought to cook. I work. Well, she worked too. See, it's a little unfair to me that a man worked, the wife worked, she come in, she cooks up, and the, and the husband sit down and wait till you get it cooked. At least the man ought to take over some of the kitchen duties. Let me go on before y'all get mad at me now. Yeah, that man, now she done, she done slaved in there cooking. You done got your belly full. You feel good. Hey, man, get in there and empty the, the garbage. Clean the plate out. Put it in the dishwasher. Or let your hand become a dishwasher. Pray the Lord. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Hallelujah. Let me go on to what I'm supposed to preach. Amen. I said, amen. My subject is said, take it. Take it. Hallelujah. The Lord has said to me of recent, praise God, there are too many of his people. Did I read Romans? Did I read that? It said God has given us what? All things through his son, Jesus Christ. Freely given us what? All things. Healing, salvation, deliverance, peace, joy. Financial prosperity, hope, amen, somebody. All of these things have been what? Freely what? Given to us. And the Lord said to me, my people are not taking what's theirs. Now, the grace of God has afforded us to have all of these things. He said, grace brought it. 
but faith has to take it. Shout hallelujah. Say it's available. Healing is available, right? Deliverance is available, right? Joy is available. Peace is available. Amen. Uh, amen. A, 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 a beautiful home, sweet sweetness is a home is what? Available. Unity is a better word in the home is what? Available. Shout hallelujah. It's all available. God has given us what? All things to enjoy. But, you know how we got it? Grace brought it. You ain't got to earn your healing. It's already been given. You ain't got to earn your deliverance. It's already given. When he died he, on the cross, he said, it is what? Finished. Your healing is available when? Now. Say it's on the shelf. You just got to what? Take it. Shout hallelujah. Joy. Tell me, I'm, so, I'm so tired of being so tired. I'm just, I'm so tired of not having no joy. Well, get up and what? Take it. It's available. Take it. Well, I'm just so tired of falling and getting up and falling. Amen. It, the ability to stand is there. Take it. Shout hallelujah. Now, that, that we said the kingdom from the time of John the Baptist, and I'm hearing the close. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered what? Violence. The kingdom of heaven suffered what? Violence. Why? The enemy, the arch enemy of our soul has been fighting us to not receive what Jesus Christ died for us to have. A lot of what we should have, we're not enjoying. It's not because grace has not brought it, but we're not what? Taking it. Whatever God has given the church, we have a Bosiki on the old Shia. We have a responsibility to what? Take it. Shout hallelujah. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and get up and what? Take your joy. Somebody, well, they didn't come over last night. They didn't come over. So what? Get up, amen, and take your what? Joy. It's yours. Take it. Well, Pastor, I'm so tired. I'm just so tired of not having no money. Amen. Well, get up and take the right to prosper. It's yours. Take it. How do I know that? Beloved, First John said, Beloved, I wish above what? All things that thou mayest what? Prosper and be what? In what? Health. Even as your what? Soul prosper. It's there for the what? Taking. And part of what's wrong is we are not exercising our faith. We say things with words, but in our hearts, and it begins first where? In the heart. Romans 10 said, with the what? Heart. Man believe unto righteousness. And with the what? Mouth. We got a lot of mouth, but not heart. Yeah, you got to get it first where? In your heart. Then you can get it with your what? Your mouth. But mouth alone won't do it. Because uh, the Bible said, faith without works is what? Dead. So take it. Shout hallelujah. Now the Lord, I believe the Lord impressed something in my spirit. Uh, I've been out to Reading Church. Dr. Bill Johnson's wife died the other day, Benny. And I know people were praying literally all over the world. All over the world. Hallelujah. There are some things about God you just have to trust. The Lord said this to me yesterday. You don't have to agree with everything he said. You have to obey it. See, in your humanity, there are things that God's in the scripture sometimes I don't understand. And I may not agree with. But I have to obey it. You understand? And I was telling, uh, I think I was telling my wife last night, and I said, now, he was over uh, an apostolic group of people. It was Cheon, Lou Ingalls, all these powerful men of God. And he's known all over the world. His church is a powerful, uh, miracle-working church. But she died. So I'm persuaded of this. God said she coming home. I don't understand all that, but I trust God. And having said that, next I'm saying, take what you need. Shout hallelujah. In other words, because somebody died doesn't, doesn't, doesn't uh, depreciate the word of God. It doesn't make the word of God what? Weak. No. There are a lot of things in life we're not going to understand, and God is not obligated to explain it to us. But we are obligated to trust who? God. So trust when you can't trace. 
There are many times I can't trace the application of understanding why I'm going through this or why this happened. But then I hear in my spirit, trust. And trust comes with an exclamation mark. Or uh, maybe I say a period. When you say, when he said trust, you stop. That's a full statement. At trust, there comes a full what? Stop. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, trust God. He knows what's best for you. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So what did I say? Take it. Hallelujah. So everything we need, your healing is yours. Your deliverance is yours. Your joy is available. All of it is available to us. Our problem is we're not appropriating taking it. Yeah, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. In the last three years, man, the kingdom of God has been hurt, wounded, dead. Folk died before their time. It suffered some. Why? That was an arch enemy of the kingdom of God. Satan is not God's friend. He's God's enemy. He's your enemy. You better know that. Don't play around with him. Don't play no games with the devil. Don't ha-ha-ha with the devil. Samson ha-ha-ha with the devil, and he lost his what? Strength. Don't play around with Delilah. She'll get your strength. Shout hallelujah. See, he, he, he was counting on how strong he was, but he made light of his enemy. Don't make light of the devil. He is a, a man. He is a notorious foe. He will confront you in every place. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. When he come in like a flood, Spirit of God will raise up a what? A standard against the devil. So you can win every time. You can win, win every time. We don't have to suffer loss. We suffer loss when we let down on God. As long as you hold up Amen. The blood-stained banner of Christ, you can win every time. Colossians say he always causes us to what? Triumph. Always causes us to what? Triumph. Not sometimes. Always. Said so take it. So the kingdom of God suffered violence. John the Baptist preached about Herod, and Herod put him in jail. And before long, Herod had his head what? Cut off. The kingdom of heaven suffered what? Violence. And the Lord said to me one time concerning John, hallelujah, uh, it was this preacher out of, uh, uh, out of uh, uh, Texas, powerful man of God, lost his daughter in a plane crash. I think I told you about him. I can't think of his name right now. I know him really well. Hallelujah. And he said that his wife grieved so she didn't make sure that, and he did. He said, but on the 20th, 21st night, he said he woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning because the clock is in the bed. He said, there stood Jesus. He said, Jesus sits right down on his bed like, like a doctor would with a patient. And Jesus told him, say, yes, I know how you feel. You lost your main one. Just like I lost one of my main one when I lost John the Baptist. See, John was the what? Forerunner. He got his head, what? Cut off. Jesus said, I lost one. So the kingdom of heaven suffered violence even during whose day? Christ's day. But John had said, I must what? Decrease. And he must what? Increase. This is how we're going to begin to take things. We got to decrease to the what? Flesh. And increase in who? God. Listen, the Lord has made known to me, amen. It's time for the church to take what he has freely given to us. See, healing is the children's bread. Freely take it. Not freely you have been given, not freely what? Receive. Say, take it. Hallelujah, I'm just about through. Say, so you got to so take what you want. Hallelujah. And the Lord brought this to me about medication. Here's some headache medicine. Here's Advil. You have to have some confidence in these products. And you are a part of it because if you want them to do you any good, you got to what? Take it. So you got to what? So, in, in other words, you are part of having whatever this is supposed to do for you. You have a part in making sure something what? Works. Am I right about it? Oh, I'm not right about it. I'm just, saying, I'm just asking you. Hallelujah. Amen. But, but you understand, 
there's an effort of faith involved here. 